Okay, YouTubers, this is The Angry Prepper. Today's episode is going to be on the Ebola Stock Destroyer. So this bag is my go-to bag in the wintertime, right? So obviously in the wintertime you're carrying more gear and you need a bigger bag, right? So for spring and fall and even summer, if I do go out, I carry the half track or the Hazard 4 officer's front because you carry way less gear. And if I'm doing my bushcrafting for the weekend, I'm carrying a haversack. Once you go out in the winter time, like I said, you have more gear, you need a bigger bag. This is the bigger bag to go to. I think this is the, this is my go-to bag for winter time. I don't have any other substitutes and I've been using this probably for the last five years now, uh, maybe less than that, four or five years. And it's held up really well. And Evelyn stock bags hold up really well there is no they don't make weak bags they don't make shitty bags and i'm not like you know uh kissing their ass or anything like that because i bought all these bags they didn't give me anything um and i don't i'd rather not be given things it's nice to be given stuff but it's better to buy your own because then you could have an, an an honest uh opinion and review without having to feel uh like you owe them one because they gave you something so that being said this bag is mine and not uh, not given to me. And these bags, all of their bags, are by far the best gear or bags I've come across ever. Uh, you could beat these bags of shit and they're pretty good. So anyway, that being said, let's jump into the bag. All right, so starting from the top, there's molly webbing on the outside. As you can see, there's molly webbing here, there's molly webbing in the front, and there's molly webbing right here at the bottom, all right? So you can add more gear to it. Now, I've seen a lot of these bags carried by military personnel. It looks like special forces. I don't see uh, regular guys or, or servicemen carrying this. I usually see special forces guys carrying these things. They don't have a lot of stuff molly to the outside of this bag. Um, and if they do, I guess it's stuff they need. But for civilians like us, there's, re there's really no need to molly anything to the front other than if you're going to carry... A blanket or something on the outside or you're gonna uh, strap your jacket to the front it's probably all you're gonna really need it for you're not gonna need it for a lot of extra gear because we don't carry that much stuff to begin with and a lot of the stuff if not all of it fits inside the bag so starting from the top there's a top compartment right here in the, in the bag and it does not come loose but it does have straps in the back here which uh, come undone not coming to loosen up to heighten this so that you can put more gear and get it about yay high so the bag is 60 liters and it's also eight pounds so you have to account for the eight pounds when you're taking this bag out with you so if you normally carry 60 pounds worth of gear or 55 pounds worth of gear which is a lot of gear to carry you have to account for the eight pounds that this is uh, going to add to it right so now this is the top compartment here are there's a pocket here, and here you would put uh, maps. I also put flatter meals, like uh, the tuna fish meals and stuff like that. They fit in here very well. You, and, and I also put the hand warmers in this compartment right here. There's a compartment at the top here. And in here is where you can put bigger items. I carry my meals at the top part of the bag because it's easier to get to and faster to get to. I don't bury them in here. I keep them on the top here. If, if I have the half track, I keep them at the top compartment as well. My spoons and all my uh, eating utensils are also at the top as well. So, the buckles on the bag, I forgot to mention. There are 10 buckles throughout the, the entire bag, on the outside of the bag, that is. There is one on the inside. Uh, the buckles, again, they're very adjustable. The straps are pretty long. Uh, some of these straps do get in the way. So, if you want to duct tape some of these, you can. The shoulder strap... Uh, adjustment straps which are these right here I wish they had velcro but if not you just roll them up and you could duct tape them to the length that you have them at and then duct tape them closed so that you don't have to worry about them getting in the way the same goes for the the adjustment straps for the top compartment roll those up and put duct tape on them as well um, this comes with a sleeve an extent uh, I think I guess it's called an extension sleeve so you can pack to about this high and the top compartment goes to the length of, sorry, the height of this. 
there are two closing ports here. There's this one right here. And as you can see, the string closes it, closes it tight. And then you have this one here that closes it further, preventing water, dirt, sand from getting inside. So you have double uh, closure to the one opening that's on top. You can get your gear into the top here and you can get your gear into the front here. I love the front opening uh, doors. That is pretty cool because you can lay your pack down and take everything out from the top. If you don't want to lay it down, you can stand it up and you can dig in from the top here. There's also a, a door here at the bottom. We're going to get into that. That's where I usually keep my sleeping bag or sleeping gear. If I have my hammock and my wool blanket, that all gets stuffed in there and it fits pretty well. So now we're going to dive into the inside top compartment of the bag. The barn door opening here in the front is pretty cool. And in here, you'll see two pockets. You'll see, or pouches, sorry, you'll see two pouches. You'll see pouch number one here and pouch number two here. Pouch number one, I used to keep my uh, Hazard 4 Pancho Villa Pancho in the top. And the second one, I put extra stuff like a map or something, a secondary map that I can also access here. The two pockets in the side here, you can put more gear in there as well. And the base of it here is where you would probably put um, your tent and things like that. Again, if I have my hammock, my hammock goes in the top compartment here. My sleeping uh, blanket or sleeping bag fits down here at the bottom. And then anything else I need, water bottle, first aid kit, all goes in this compartment right here. Uh, there is a divider, which is right here. And this divider also cinches close. This divider can turn your bag into one long compartment. So you'll push it down inside the bag like so, and then it opens it up to one big uh, compartment instead of dividing it into two. We're gonna look at the bottom compartment. This is the bottom compartment, as you can see. This is the, uh, like I said, where I put all my sleeping gear, uh, sleeping bag, wool blankets, things like that roll up in here. This bag has a lot to it, right? So you also have, which we're gonna talk about in a couple minutes, uh, the harness, the adjustable shoulder harness system that adjusts to your height and where you want the bag. We're gonna get that in a second. So there are two outer pockets on both sides. There's the mesh pocket here. There's the, uh, I guess, closed material pocket here. They both cinch tight. You have the two buckles on the outside in case you put anything in the bottom pocket and extends up to the top. You could latch it in and it will not fall out, whatever the item is. You have two more, you have two more pockets like that on this side and you have handles. These handles right here are very strong. Now my buddy did rip his and he got to Ebola stock. Um, I'm not sure if they replied to him, but I told him you can also take it to a tailor and just get it fixed. But I would rather take it back to the company that built them so they could put it back in right and, my, and you won't have that problem again, right? So here goes the handle on both sides. Now, the harness system. This is adjustable. As you can see, their shoulder straps are comfortable as hell. Their waist strap is comfortable as hell. This thing adjusts to where you need it to be. Right, so before you pack anything in it, make sure it's adjustable, but the adjusting process is a little daunting. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. You have to, un you have to un velcro it and then move it to the levels you want. As you can see here, there are different levels where the shoulders harness can uh, be adjusted to. So if you want it to carry a little higher than normal, you can do so. If you want it to carry a little lo lower than normal, you can do so. Keep it in mind, it has to be in line with your waist, okay? The waist strap is the measuring point to where you want the shoulder harness to rest, not the other way around. I, I did it the other way around, I got it wrong. And then I did it with this and it fits just right now, right? So you gotta adjust it to the shoulder uh, waist, the waist belt first, and then use the shoulder harness system and adjust it accordingly, right? So as you can see, the back is breathable. It's a very breathable back. I have to admit, uh, with their half track, which is breathable as well, I do sweat in the back. You're always going to sweat on your back, no matter what bag you have. You do tend to sweat less depending on the bag, the bags 
back circulation venting system, right? Depends on how well it's made and how uh, venting it is, you're gonna sweat a lot or a little bit, but you're always going to sweat. There's no such thing as not sweating with a backpack on, right? So even with this, which is very uh, porous and vents very well, it does, uh, does make you sweat, right? So you have an additional handle at the top here. You have D-rings all throughout the bag here, right? There's a hydration sleeve here. The hydration sleeve is here and it goes down pr pretty far, I guess for the two or three liter to fit. Uh, it lets you know where the hydration pouches go and it clips in right here. So there's on both sides. So you could put two two liters or two three liters on both sides. You're carrying anywhere between four to six liters of water. Keep in mind that's going to weigh your bag down. All right. So that is pretty much it for the Ebola Stock uh, Destroyer review. Like I said, I love this bag. I think it's uh, it's spot on. I did do a bug out walk with this bag. I'm going to release it after I release this video. Uh, it was a bit of a pain in the ass walking with that bag because it was all eyes on you with walking with something like this uh, in the street. So I got all kinds of comments from between here and my job. It's fine. It wasn't, you know, they weren't stupid. They were just, everyone had to make a comment. But um, other than that, this bag is, is awesome. Like I said, I swear by it. You want a, a good winter bag? or a decent bag that's gonna have you pack, uh, backpack through whatever country or trail that you're, you're walking on, this is the bag to go with. Anyway, other than that, thank you for watching. This is The Angry Prepper. You can like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, you can also follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. All right, guys, thank you for watching.